Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta, and today we are going to understand how to run survival analysis Cox regression in SPSS. Cox regression, also known as a Cox proportional hazards model, is a powerful statistical tool used in survival analysis. This method is commonly used to investigate the relationship between the survival time of individuals and one or more predictor variables. Its semi-parametric nature and ability to handle sensor data make it widely applicable in various fields. The Cox proportional hazards model is given by this formula. So H T X is H zero T into exponentiated beta one X one plus beta two X two and the last time is beta P X P. So H T X is the hazard function at time t given the covariates x. S zero t is a baseline hazard function representing the hazard when all covariates are zero. Beta one, beta two, and beta p are the coefficients that represent the effect size of the covariates. X one, x two, x p are the predictor variables. The predictor variables can be age, treatment type, or gender. Let's take one example. Suppose you are analyzing the survival time of patients with certain diseases. You have two covariates, treatment type x1 and age x2. After fitting a Cox model, you find beta1 is minus 0.5 for treatment type, implying that the treatment reduces the hazard by a factor of exponentiated. Uh, now I'll take beta here, so the value will be 0.61 or a 39% reduction in risk. Why I get uh, how I get 39%? One minus 0.61. I have already uh, explained this concept of beta one and exponentiated uh, beta in my video of logistic regression. Kindly refer to it. Beta two is equal to point zero two for age, indicating that each additional year of age increases the hazard by two percent. See, this is positive. It means that it increases the hazard, and this is negative. It means that it decreases the hazard. This suggests that the treatment is effective in reducing the risk of the event, while older age is associated with a higher risk. Key aspects of Cox regression: flexibility does not require the specification of the baseline hazard function, handles sensor data, can effectively incorporate sensor survival times, which are common in survival analysis. Multiple predictors can handle multiple covariates simultaneously, allowing for the study of complex relationships. Now let's take one case study. A comprehensive study was conducted across multiple institutions to examine the factors influencing the survival time of cancer patients. The primary objective of this research was to identify significant predictors of survival outcomes and to develop a robust model that could assist in patient prognosis and clinical decision making. Key variables include the survival time of patients in days. So here is it in second column. Censoring status indicator indicating whether the patient had died or was censured due to being lost to follow up or still alive at the study's end. I have explained this entire concept of censored in my in my video of survival analysis life tables. Kindly refer to it. The other predictor variables are age, gender, and various performance scores. Specifically, the Eastern Cooperative Oncological Group (ECOG) performance score was used to assess patients' functional status, ranging from zero to four, where zero stands for asymptomatic and four for bed bound. So here is it: pH dot ECOG. Then we are having pH dot Carno and Pat dot Carno. So these are the Karnowski performance score rated both by physicians and patients. They provided a detailed assessment of the patient's overall health and ability to carry out daily activities, with scores ranging from zero poor to hundred good. Other variables included in the analysis were the number of calories consumed at meals here and the amount of weight lost in the last six months. So we will go into the data set. Here is the data, same data set. So to run uh, Cox regression, we will go in analyze, survival analysis, and Cox regression. 
now i will transfer survival time in time censoring status in status define event one is dead and zero is censored which is dropouts continue age in years gender of the respondent the categorical variable click on categorical transfer gender of the respondent here click continue click on plots survival and hazard take the gender into the separate lines continue nothing to change here and press ok done so we are having case processing summary then the omnibus test of model coefficients variables in the equation covariate means and pattern values so survival function at mean of covariates survival function for, for patterns 1 to 2 hazard function at mean of covariates and hazard function for patterns 1 to 2 i have copied this on my powerpoint slides so that the so that we can interpret easily we start with case processing summary 63 events have happened censored 138 so events 63 cases that is 27.6 percent had the event occurred which is death censored 138 cases 60 60.5 percent were censored meaning the event did not occur during the study period or they were lost to follow-ups next is omnibus test of model coefficients we are having minus two log, li log likelihood overall chi-square and its p-value change from previous step its chi-square and p-value change from previous block its chi-square and p-value the omnibus test of model coefficient table is a key output in the cox regression analysis providing the information about the significance of the model after including the predictor variables so we'll write start writing interpretation minus two log likelihood the value is 518.219 this value is a measure of goodness of fit of the cox regression model lower values indicate a better fit it represents how well the model explains the observed data overall score chi-square significance value is 0 0.009 the p-value indicates whether the model with predictors with predictors is statistically significant since the p-value is less than 0 0.05 it suggests that the model significantly improves the prediction of survival time compared to a model without this predictor so basically we are comparing it with the null model in null model we don't have any predictors or in other words no independent variables have been included and then we are comparing the chi-square with it so here p-value is less than 0 0.05 it means that the model exists a good model exists with the predictor variable so desirable is p-value should be less than 0 0.05 here in overall as well as previous step as well as the previous block now the change from previous step the p-value here shows that the change in the model fit is statistically significant meaning that the predictors added in the steps significantly improves the model i am talking about this part previous block this p-value the p-value here confirms that the addition of this predictors has significantly improved the model now the variables in the equation the beta coefficients beta minus 0.622 it is minus this is the regression coefficient for the variable gender of the respondent a negative coefficient suggests that being male assuming male is coded as 1 and female as 0 is associated with the decreased hazard rate see if this was positive then the contribution will be will be towards whatever which is coded as 1 here male is coded as 1 so hazard risk will increase if you are male now this is negative it means that it, it decreases the hazard of the male and increases the hazard of female so a negative coefficient suggests that being male is associated with a decreased hazard rate meaning males have a lower risk of the event that is death in in, uh, in the study of cancer occurring compared to females exponentiated beta 0.537 this is exponentiated coefficient also known as a hazard ratio how we got it when we took the exponent exponential function of this we got 0 0.537 a value of 0 0.537 means that the males have 53 percent 53.7 percent of the hazard risk 
compared to females. In other words, male are about 46.3%. How I got this? 1 minus 0.537. Now, I have already explained this concept in my video of logistic regression. Kindly refer to it. So, in other words, male are about 46.3% less likely to experience the event compared to females holding other factors constant. Age in years, this is minus 0 0.026. The regression coefficient for age in years is slightly negative, indicating, see it is negative, it means that indicating that as age increases, the hazard rate slightly decreases. However, the effect is minimal and not statistically significant. The reason is the p-value here is more than 0 0.05. P-value in case of gender is less than 0 0.05. So, this is the significant predictor, gender. Age, not so significant. Now, we talk about exponentiated beta, which is 0.975. The hazard ratio for age. A value of 0.97 suggests that for each additional year of age, the hazard decreases by about 2.5%. So, why this decreasing? Because this is negative, though this effect is not statistically significant. Okay. Survival function at mean of covariates. You can see there is uh, the curve is uh, sloping downwards. More, more the time passes, the cumulative survival rate drops. Now, according to the male and female, blue one is for male and red one is for female. The, the, the curve for the female is steeper in comparison to male. It means that uh, the, the occurrence of the event in female is more faster in comparison to males. Or in other words, the survival rate of female is less in compared to males in cancer patients. Now the hazard function at mean of covariates, the overall, both are overall. This is a overall for survival. This is for hazard. Now hazard function according to male and female. Females, their, uh, their line is above. This red line is above the blue one, which means that the females are exposed to more hazard in comparison to males. So the conclusion is gender is a statistically significant predictor of the hazard rate with females coded as zero and having a higher risk of the event compared to males. Age has a minor effect on reducing the hazard risk as it increases, but this effect is not statistically significant. So this was all about how to run survival analysis Cox regression in SPSS. For more videos on advanced data analysis using SPSS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I have uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also follow me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.